So just by way of introduction, my name is Navjyoti Sharma. Uh, super excited uh, to be talking about uh, the Cisco Nexus dashboard today. Uh, what I believe is a truly transformative data operations experience uh, for our customers, something that, that you know, solves uh, a lot of pain points uh, and hopefully uh, will get our customers excited in terms of uh, you know, operationalizing their data center infrastructure. Um, brief agenda today. Um, I'll start with uh, an introduction of what we're trying to solve with the Nexus dashboard, uh, you know, some of the features. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive uh, into the Nexus dashboard, the architecture, um, and uh, just some of the uh, user experience uh, bits that I'm going to share with uh, actual screenshots. Uh, and then finally, we're going to conclude. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, I'll pause for some questions. Uh, I expect this to be uh, a topic of interest, so uh, you know, feel free to shoot away, interrupt me uh, whenever you need to. All right. This is the problem today. When I look at the um, network operation center, uh, you know, the variety of personas that are sitting there, um, you know, these are the questions that they're asking um, in terms of the true primary workflows that they're trying to solve: um, the plan, predict, change, automate, or the uh, discover. Um, remediate, uh, automate workflow. The challenge is with the modern day two operations tool set, uh, you're promised a lot. Um, you know, you're promised uh, deep insights, you're promised end-to-end uh, -end automation, uh, and the holy grail, you're promised the answer to your end-to-end um, -end visibility, um, analysis, and hopefully remediation and automation questions, right? But the reality is slightly different, and one of the analysts uh, when we introduced the Nexus dash, we'll put it very nicely. They called it the swivel chair syndrome, uh, where these different personas are essentially swiveling around in their chair, uh, you know, asking questions of each other, or at a more fundamental level, just trying to find out how to log in to another capability or a service to perhaps get an insight from that tier. A fundamentally broken um, user experience, uh, not delivering in terms of uh, what the uh, end goals are, which is really no MTTR, um, you know, and um, predictable change management. Uh, two primary things that we like to carry out in terms of uh, the data center operations. Now, if you think about why that is, uh, it's an artifact. It's an artifact of purpose-built silos. It's an artifact of uh, siloed data stacks, of uh, siloed data lakes, uh, of custom telemetry connectors, uh, essentially operating of, um, you know, purpose-built appliances, right? Uh, the, the challenge then remains that uh, the, you know, the cost of the life cycle maintenance of these stacks, uh, the capabilities might be raised, don't get me wrong, but the cost of the life cycle maintenance of these individual stacks, the customer's burden, right? And that's what we're essentially trying to solve with the Nexus dashboard. Think of the Nexus dashboard as a unified automations platform on which you can host a single unified automations platform on which you can host all of your data operations services. What I mean by that is, let's take the change management workflow. Now, let's say you have uh, four or five data center sites uh, could be controlled uh, by, you know, in a completely turnkey, uh, intent-based networking manner with, uh, let's say, the ACI controller or a standard-based controller, let's say, with uh, DCNM, or perhaps could be sitting in the public cloud infrastructure, either on AWS or Azure. Now your data center literally is sitting in these variety of places and you want to operationalize these off a single platform. You want to use the same set of tools um, to uh, deliver insights, uh, rich troubleshooting capability, and hopefully correlated insights that are able to give you an end-to-end -end view you know, of your flows, of the state of your uh, data center infrastructure, regardless of where it's sitting, right? And that's what the Nexus dashboard is trying to solve. So let's say you're trying to carry out a change management workflow with the multi-site orchestrator sitting on top of the uh, Nexus dashboard platform, regardless of where your site is, whether it's DCNM or ACI or public cloud infrastructure, you, are, you have a single pane of glass from which you're able to orchestrate all of these changes. With the rich Nexus Insights capabilities, you have 360 degrees telemetry all the way from flow telemetry uh, to the hygiene of a particular device in the network in terms of its operational state, all the way up to the intent plane, right? And you're able to make sure that there is consistency across all these three layers of telemetry, if you will, right? So telemetry that there's the actual device state, policy state, and configuration state being in sync and consistent with the state of your infrastructure. You're able to correlate all of that. You're able to get an end-to-end -end view across your hybrid, across the entirety of your hybrid cloud infrastructure, right? So this platform enables you 
to optimally operationalize the entirety of your data center infrastructure by allowing you to co-host and run these rich set of capabilities, um, you know, Nexus Insights, multi-site orchestrator, network assurance engine that are able to give you this rich suite of capabilities with which you're able to A, achieve higher uptime, lower MTTR, and predictive change management, right? Uh, in the future, uh, we're also talking about uh, rolling in third-party uh, services for your ITSM integrations um, with uh, things like ServiceNow and then SIEM integrations with Splunk, right? And if you want to operate infrastructure as code, uh, you know, you're able to integrate with uh, Red Hat Ansible uh, and Terraform um, scripts as well. A quick view of what the Nexus dashboard essentially offers you, right? There are two views, the operator view and the admin view. The operator view is very simple. The goal in life of the operator when he logs into the Nexus dashboard is A, to see the health of the sites that he's in charge of, uh, B, look at the state of the services or the services that they have access to in order to operationalize these, right? That's, it's, it's very simple. And when they click into these services, the expectation is that they are not having to log in again. They are not having to remember or look up URLs or credentials on you know, uh, different sort of spreadsheets. And it's a unified user experience. These tools are integrated in such a way that an operator does not need to get trained across individual capabilities. All of these applications, all of these things provide a unified, consistent user experience powered by SSO, right? So we want to remove all friction. So that's number one, right? Uh, you should be able to customize your views. You should be able to look at issues that you're working on or change management workflows you're working on, right? Uh, those are capabilities that we provide uh, with the operator view. The other aspect that we solve with the uh, administrative view is really rationalizing the one-time setup that is needed for your operations infrastructure. Think about uh, the state today, right? Uh, when you're setting up these purpose-built appliances that are, you know, that comprise of your operations tools, what are you doing? You are doing, um, you know, a multitude of uh, site controller setup, you're doing, um, you know, user setup, you're doing authentication domain setup, you're doing all of these things that should really be common and you should be doing once. And once you do them, the operators, the users, the administrators should be able to access them. So with the admin view, what you get is the convenience of a one-time setup of the sites that you're trying to operationalize, the services that you're trying to consume, the users that will eventually have access to these sites or these services to run their data center operations, and consistent user management and control that is powered by our app, right? That's Those are two goals. So in short, this is what you get with the operator view, this is what you get with the, uh, with the administrator view. Uh, fundamentally trying to solve the uh, frictionless user experience problem as you consume these unified set of data center uh, operations capabilities that are powered by this Nexus dashboard platform. Okay. When we talk about the capabilities of the platform itself, we do consider that you know, organizations that potentially have a geographic or an international presence could have data center infrastructures that could be you know, operating internationally, right? They might need uh, their platform clusters just for geo data sovereignty reasons to, be, to have their data lakes constrained uh, to a certain geography. Uh, that would mean multiple uh, operations clusters. That would mean multiple Nexus dashboard platform clusters on which these applications are running. However, we still want to continue to provide a, a single pane of glass, a single management experience from which you are consuming all of these uh, infrastructures. So with the Nexus dashboard platform, uh, if, even if you have multiple platform clusters, you're able to consume them from a single pane of glass using the Nexus dashboard. B, uh, when we start out, which is um, uh, in the December timeframe, end of the year timeframe, we are first coming out with the Nexus dashboard physical platform cluster. That's a piece of performance hardware. I'll talk about the details later on which you could go host these applications, right? We, but we realized as your data center is diversifying, you know, from physical on-prem location to the, the cloud, to the colo, uh, you need a variety of cluster node options as well. And we flesh the portfolio out with uh, physical, virtual, and uh, cloud node options. You'll have flexible deployment options. The cluster today is simply comprised of uh, physical nodes. Uh, in the future, you'll be able to mix and match uh, physical nodes with virtual nodes or with cloud nodes. Right? That gives you a tremendous flexibility in terms of uh, you know, uh, your, your, uh, your cluster scale out options uh, and what your cluster sort of comprised of. B will support all site types, all controller types, right? Really the vision is that this is operations anywhere, uh, any app, any site, uh, you know, anywhere. Uh, what that means 
is uh, whether it's a standards-based controller environment or a intent-based networking environment driven by ACI or the public cloud infrastructure. Uh, all of those sites, operations for all of those sites should be supported uh, on the Nexus dashboard, right? Uh, and then a few uh, uh, services for our, like IPv6, native IPv6 support for our uh, service provider customers, right? In terms of the user experience and what we're trying to do with, um, um, you know, the roles uh, and workflows that we're enhancing with the Nexus dashboard in the future release, uh, we are actually planning um, a multi-tenant view uh, of roles, right? Uh, with the single pane of glass across multiple platform clusters, an organization might have multiple tenant level hierarchies, right? Might, might have multiple organization, sub-organization level hierarchies that you want to incorporate uh, in your role-based view and your user management sort of, uh, should sort of reflect that, right? Once you act as a single pane of glass across the entirety of your operations infrastructure, you should get an aggregate view of anomalies um, or of alerts or of the health uh, of your entire data center operations infrastructure. That's a capability that will be there. Uh, and then workflows for issue, uh, issues management, right? Um, the life cycle around uh, troubleshooting a, a single issue, uh, all of that will be baked in so that operators can um, you know, incorporate sort of the follow the sun model, if you will, by sharing work views and progress across these issues. Um, and then we'll come out with the first wave of third-party integrations with, uh, with ServiceNow being the first uh, integration so that you can integrate in the ticketing system, right? So really, if you think about the Nexus dashboard, uh, the vision is to transform your operations really uh, by running um, all of your apps on a single platform cluster, uh, you know, it, being able to co-host all of these capabilities, uh, providing you a single pane of glass uh, that allows you a flexibility of deployment options across all site types, across different form factors, whether they're physical, virtual, or cloud. Um, so literally any app, any site, anywhere. Um, that, that's how I, uh, I like to think about the Nexus dashboard. And fundamentally, it's the platform that is powering this by providing you uh, a shared data lake, uh, of the ability to uh, do correlated insights, uh, because this is a standard platform on which all these applications are hosted. Before I do uh, or move into the uh, deep dive section, uh, let me just quickly pause for uh, see if there are any questions. I've got one for you, if you don't mind. Um, so I may be one of the few server fanboys in the crowd today, but I'm trying to figure out how does ne Nexus dashboard fit in with Intersight, for example? Is there any overlap? Is there any integration? Is it two completely separate silos? The Nexus dashboard, think of the Nexus dashboard as a control point for all of your data center networking infrastructure. Whereas the Intersight uh, piece is really for uh, you know the single point of uh, control and management for all of your compute infrastructure. Right? Um, now we don't want to operate these two silos, which means certainly there is a level of integration between that. And I'll talk about that uh, uh, if in the context of the Nexus dashboard. We do communicate. We do have an integration with Intersight today, where we are able to exchange a base level of insights. In fact, uh, one of the key capabilities relies on an Intersight connector. Um, which is the net, the advisory capability, uh, pretty much a robotic agent that looks, uh, you know, the state of your fabric, advises you of bugs, research, CVDs, or any security vulnerabilities, uh, out of compliance devices. Um, that capability actually relies uh, on a connection uh, with Intersight, a connected tag functionality, the ability to collect that, uh, you know, tech support. So just reliability, accessibility, serviceability, that part is driven, uh, you know, through the, uh, through the Intersight connector. Uh, but today, these two exist as two uh, two separate pieces, right? And we are trying to come out with the Nexus dashboard, um, you know, uh, as the uh, as the single point. Of view. The second thing, um, Intersight today operates, um, you know, uh, it's a SaaS first model, right? Um, the the kind of applications that we big data in a small form factor, if you will, that we are trying to uh, host on the Nexus dashboard need, uh, you know, uh, strong, uh, uh, you know, uh, large amounts of telemetry from the actual devices to give you these rich insights, right? Um, so an on-prem model is the first one uh, that we sort of came out with, right? Uh, which is the uh, Nexus dashboard platform, the uh, ability to op actually operate that infrastructure. Um, now, some of these are future looking things, but we are definitely looking at, um, you know, sassifying the management piece, if you will, um, with the operations piece that is actually collecting and ingesting the telemetry being resident uh, on the customer owned infrastructure. And now for the technical uh, bits and pieces, right? This is uh, this slide shows uh, what the physical platform node actually looks like. It is based off the uh, UCS M5 hardware with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, innovation that's actually built in. So power pack uh, in terms of, uh, you know, memory computes about 40 cores. Um, we have uh, 256 gig, 9.6 terabytes of hard drive. So plenty of storage 
um, memory and compute on a single node. The cluster is initially available as a three node cluster. Uh, the cool thing is uh, when I talk about the uh, software components as well, uh, you know, we're using a modern microservices stack with uh, industry standard container management using Kubernetes, right? In the three node cluster, we are actually combining the master and the worker personas, right? So there is, uh, you know, there's a lot of software innovation that I'll, uh, I'll talk about as well. But fundamentally, the cluster gives you three things. Number one, horizontal scale out, right? So as the needs of your application grow, or the size of uh, the fabric that you're monitoring increases, uh, you don't need to buy another appliance. You simply need to, you know, add nodes to an existing cluster. A cluster fundamentally gives you uh, high availability, right? With this modern lifecycle management of uh, microservices, uh, you know, you're essentially getting uh, high availability sort of baked in um, to the inherent infrastructure. Uh, and we're able to co-host, um, you know, all of the three uh, rich capabilities, right? Insights for doing, um, you know, real-time telemetry-based insights and fabric hygiene, uh, assurance for formally modeling uh, intent to policy to, um, you know, uh, the dynamic state of the infrastructure, uh, you know, ensuring that intent is assured across all these three layers. And then multi-site orchestrator for your change management workflows in a standardized, deputized way across the entirety of your sites, whether it's DCNM or ACR. Under the hood, this is what the software stack looks like. So number one, think about um, when the, uh, you know, what, what runs inside a node, what runs inside a platform node. Uh, the, the, the first piece is uh, the secure container OS called the Atomics OS that we've built. Right? Uh, it's a hardened, secure kernel that's, uh, you know, it's goal in life. Uh, is to run containers, right, in a, in a secure manner, right? Um, the second piece is sort of the system services where uh, in order to ensure, number one, the secure bring up of the Kubernetes cluster uh, or the Kubernetes service, uh, and then enabling secure communication, right, cert-based communication between microservices that, that are running on these nodes, um, you know, you have the keyboard uh, that is running as part of the uh, system services. B, Kubernetes, right? Uh, that is uh, sort of an industry standard uh, mechanism for orchestrating microservice uh, lifecycle management, right? Uh, and then we have the uh, infrastructure services, the SSO that powers the frictionless access, um, you know, between uh, services that they're running uh, across the cluster nodes um, or uh, to, the, to the site controllers, right? So really frictionless access across, uh, you know, whether you're going from a service to the Nexus dashboard, a service to another service, or a service to a site controller, right? Uh, each of these access points should be completely frictionless. Uh, uh, you know, you should get the right level of privilege based on uh, your RBAC permissions. That's a goal. Uh, and that's provided with, with SSO as, a, uh, as an infrastructure service. And then finally, for standardized not found access, uh, you know, we have an API gateway. Um, even, if you, if, even if you're not doing, um, you know, UI-based consumption and your primary model is programmatic consumption, um, you know, there aren't URLs to hard code in your scripts anymore. There aren't credentials to hard code in your script anymore, right? There's one API gateway from which you're accessing uh, the application endpoints, just standardizing sort of the not found access, if you will, uh, from the Nexus dashboard. And then a set of shared services that upper layer applications like the uh, orchestrator and the Nexus Insights functionality can use. Uh, Elasticsearch for your, uh, you know, index data lake, uh, uh, search data lake, and Kafka for, for streaming telemetry uh, across these microservices. And potentially in the future, uh, in addition to uh, having API level uh, access, uh, also writing topics to a Kafka broker so that uh, northbound access could be streaming instead of uh, you know, just a pull model, right? It could be a push model as well. And then tying this all together is your unified user experience with the, with the Nexus dashboard that acts as a single pane of glass across this software stack, regardless of where it's running, uh, in a physical node, in a virtual node, or in a cloud, right? Um, uh, in uh, you know, uh, in a location that is uh, monitoring DCNM or ACI uh, or the public cloud infrastructure, so literally uh, the stack could 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 run anywhere. Right? Today it runs on the on the physical node. Easy bootstrap, and you'll find this a recurring theme. Um, you know, just just a design team uh, just throughout uh, when we talk about the next stack. The focus is on the operator. The focus is on um, you know easing all of the pain points. Right. So today's cluster setup would be. Um, you know, traditional clusters are a bunch of CLI commands, uh, you know, uh, figuring out pings, figuring out uh, reachability and all that, right? Um, with the easy bootstrap, all you need to do to bring up the cluster is uh, essentially bootstrap one node, uh, you know, take this UI, um, tell the master node, the first master node, which are the two other peer nodes, and that's it. Uh, the cluster bring up happens in the background on its own, right? 
Um, so a really, really easy bootstrap uh, experience, regardless of where your cluster nodes are actually sitting. Um, the operator view, this is what the operator view looks like today. Um, you're able to view the health of um, the, uh, the data center sites that you're in charge of monitoring. Um, and this layout is gonna change a little bit as we uh, incorporate some early user feedback. Instead of these styles for services, you will see them more in line on the left-hand side panel. Uh, but the operator basically is able to see the sites that they have access to and the services that they have access to. Uh, they could, from this launch button, when you see the site, they could simply click on launch and go directly to the, uh, to the ACI controller. No need for logging in again. Right? As long as you have credentials, uh, you have the right privileges, you can log in directly to the ACI site. You click on Nexus Insights, um, directly logged into that capability. You click on multi-site orchestrator, directly logged into assurance, whichever capability you want to consume, uh, you can directly log in part traces or so into that capability. Uh, now with the uh, platform strategy, we are also combining, we are also combining the insights functionality. So in the future, you will actually see a single Nexus Insights that combines both the rich telemetry functionality uh, of the NIR and IA parts and the assurance piece. So it's going to be a single application that's operating off a shared data lake that is able to give you rich correlated insights across time, across uh, event clusters, uh, and across anomalies and insights and events. Right? So uh, all of these capabilities will basically be, uh, you know, are, are fleshed out are happening because we have a platform strategy going forward. Now, in terms of the admin view, I, I did talk about this earlier where, uh, you know, we are talking about the one-time setup. So after you bootstrap the cluster, uh, you have a single dashboard from which you can view your cluster health. Uh, if you're familiar with Kubernetes constructs, you know, you want to look at stateful sets or your pods uh, or your daemon sets, you have a single dashboard from which you uh, view the health, the number of services, uh, and which pods they're, uh, they're essentially running on, right? So you're able to see all of that, um, you know, cluster health and resources from a single dashboard. Um, in terms of a site setup, um, you know, uh, you are doing that once on an Nexus dashboard platform um, with, uh, with the admin view. You simply set up the ACI sites by providing the, uh, you know, username and credentials um, uh, and the login domain that they need to be authenticated against, uh, some base network connectivity for uh, the telemetry, and that's it. Um, this site is now available for uh, you know, multi-site orchestrator to use, uh, for Nexus Insights to use, um, you know, uh, through a single pane of glass, right? Uh, and that's that's the power of, of doing this one-time setup. Now think about programmatic consumption, where, uh, you know, the setup was done on a repeated basis on a per capability level, right? So uh, you do this just once, uh, and as, as an application, as an operator, or as a program that is interacting with this application, you simply start to consume, uh, you know, focus on the business logic rather than the setup activities. Um, in terms of setting up uh, services, which is really the capabilities that uh, power your data center operations, right? It's it's very simple. You you just download the uh, the service uh, from the DC app center. Uh, it's literally like your iOS and app model. Um, you are downloading applications onto the platform. Uh, you're enabling them. You're launching them, uh, and you start to monitor sites. Three clicks. Uh, you know you're, you're able to um, install. Uh, enable and launch an application and start getting uh, real-time uh, insights uh, into the state of your infrastructure uh, or uh, assurance uh, of your uh, policy and your config thing uh, across your infrastructure or be able to orchestrate uh, changes across all these sites. Right? So you're able to do this uh, really fast. Again, uh, ease of operation. Um, user management and setting up of login domains is also common. Um, you know, you do that once we support AAA tax tax and radius, uh, you know, we, Standard Cisco AV pair is used for privilege control based off, um, you know, uh, uh, RBAC. Uh, it's very uh, industry standard mechanisms that are being used. The user experience, if you, uh, so industry standards, it's a very, uh, you know, well known. Uh, be frictionless uh, and providing you a single launch pad from which you're consuming these applications. In terms of base connectivity, um, the cluster connectivity uh, you know, should be constrained to 150 milliseconds of uh, uh, latency for, between the cluster nodes. Um, they should be um, uh, on the data. So there's two interfaces on the Nexus dashboard platform cluster, the um, data interface and the management interface. Uh, the data interface should have uh, access to the outer band and in band for the uh, various fabrics so that you're able to orchestrate changes across them and uh, ingest telemetry. Uh, so very, very plain vanilla sort of uh, connectivity requirements, right? Um, just wanted to briefly also talk about the 
um, unification of the day two ops tools themselves. Today, they exist as uh, resources advisors for network insights and assurance. Um, as we take advantage of the single platform that is getting rolled out across your physical uh, on-prem sites and potentially your uh, cloud sites in the future, we are also going to be uh, unifying the day two ops tools. So all in all, giving you you know that uh, that unified end-to-end -end, uh, number one user experience and the ability, really, the ability to draw rich correlated insights uh, and answer the fundamental questions that are uh, you know basic to the running of your uh, of your infrastructure essentially. Um, so just key takeaways uh, as I conclude here: um, think of the Nexus dashboard as a control point, like I said, for the entire data center infrastructure, uh, and uh, think about uh, you know trying to operationalize your processes, not just the technology part, uh, but the you know, the, the people, process, technology, all three aspects uh, could be standardized using the Nexus dashboard as a control point. One tool to train folks on, one user experience to train folks on, um, you know, and one place from which to consume all of these different applications. That's a part of the platform. Thank you. Uh, I'll take questions. What's the, the billing or licensing model for the Nexus dashboard? Great question. Um, the Nexus dashboard, the beauty is uh, you're only paying, if you're buying the physical platform, you are just paying for the hardware. Um, the virtual and the cloud instances are completely free. Uh, what you essentially pay for is the app you consume, which is the Nexus Insights or the multi-site orchestrator. Um, so we're not charging you for the, although you can see it's power packed with, uh, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, innovation in terms of security and, and just being able to scale this out across the entirety of the infrastructure. Um, we're really charging you for the capability that you're consuming. So it's almost an app charge model, if you will. Uh, for the Nexus dashboard platform itself, if you're buying the physical platform, you charge the hardware. Um, that, that's, that's, the, that's the skew. Yeah. Uh, the, the application SKUs themselves are uh, one, three, five year subscriptions. Uh, the best way to buy them is uh, through the bundle tiers, the advantage for uh, multi-site orchestrator, uh, and then the premiere, if you want the full suite uh, of capabilities. Right? Uh, that includes insights, assurance, and multi-site orchestrator. But more details, I mean, on the on the ordering guide, uh, it's a lot of uh, collateral on the Cisco site to, to actually go look at uh, for, for details on that. Thank you, thank you, Robert. Hopefully that answers your question. I have one. Uh, are the views customizable? And also, uh, can we build unique views uh, for like higher up operational managers? Affirmative to both. Uh, the first one actually is, uh, uh, you know, uh, as we come out with the multi-tenant roles, we we realize if you want uh, like a follow the sun model for operators, number one, they should be able to customize the views, uh, for example, to see issues that they're working on, right? Um, if there's progress that they want to hand off across to another operator, they should be able to share these work views, right? So uh, there are collaboration uh, aspects to uh, being able to customize these work views, not just on an individual level, right? Individually provide you the capability. Uh, but we're also thinking about collaborating and uh, automating some of these uh, workflows, for example, with uh, the ServiceNow integration. So yes, absolutely, we'll have the ability to customize workflows. Um, the base level of customization is driven by the privilege. For example, if you only have access as an operator uh, to sites one and two, and you only have permissions to, let's say, run a single capability, that's all you see um, just by, uh, you know, uh, by RBAC. Um, but on top of that, uh, as you do uh, your operational views, as you're consuming these capabilities, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll have the ability to customize what you see. I don't want to see this alert. I don't want to see this anomaly. Um, you know, or I definitely want to see uh, every time uh, this anomaly pops up, uh, you know, you're able to do all that. The second view is sort of the uh, exec dashboard view. Uh, you know, as we are talking about, um, uh, you know, rolling this out across potentially multiple platform clusters that might comprise of your operations infrastructure, let's say worldwide, uh, if you get a single pane of glass, uh, an executive could simply ask the question, show me all the compliance violations uh, that I've been exposed to uh, in the last 30 days, right? Uh, and I should be able to show that from the, from the dashboard. So metrics like that, uh, some key metrics like that, we are trying to actually combine into uh, an exec dashboard view that will be available at the, at the aggregate level. Um, all of this, um, we are thinking about the first half uh, of next year. Um, it's actually in the formal uh, sort of commit process. We, we, we're going through the um, execution and planning phase on this. But yes, absolutely, that, that is the vision. Thank you, Chris, for that question. Yeah. But it's not just the fundamental you know, capabilities. You want to make these sticky across workflows, across consumption models, across the different personas who might interact with these, uh, these tools. We want to make it relevant. We want to make it sticky. 